the final project I give to my students in this class is a PSA, or what's called a public service announcement. Now you've seen PSAs before. They're usually from the government and they're on the TV or on the radio or on the internet and they tell you things like don't drink and drive, don't smoke. They tell you these things to make life better, to help society. In this topic though, what I ask my students to do is a little bit different. It's a public service announcement, but on the part of or to benefit an organization. So in this assignment, what I'd like to do is create a PSA video that is 30 to 60 seconds long, again, very short. But I want my students to find a local nonprofit organization. Of course, a nonprofit being that they are donating their work and their time. They're doing something for the community. So right away, that seems something that they're pr probably trying to be positive towards the community. So I want you to find a nonprofit organization and then develop a PSA for that organization. So you go work with them. You tell them, I'm going to make a 30 or sec 60 second video. And again, I just want to emphasize 30 seconds, 60 seconds. That really helps you to make your message clear. I prefer 30 even, but it's hard. 60 is a little bit easier because you got a little bit more space. But it's important to try your best to get the message clear and get it really concise. So for the PSA, we go ahead and find the organization that you're interested in. I don't tell you which one, it's whichever one you want to find. And you offer that you can make that video for their website for them, that they can use it later. They can use it at their events or at other meetings and venues they have. And they generally can use it to help raise awareness or even raise funds. So I'm telling my students, hey, this project work with the community and in turn for their cooperation, you're going, to, you're going to give them a video that they can use. So that's great. That's a, a great little uh, kind of cooperation. Now usually this we call the client, the person we're working for, the organization, the client. Although technically it's not a client because they're not paying, but still we're working with a client in a way. So you need to get them involved in this. And I also remind my students, don't forget the release forms, very important, because you're going to be giving your video to another organization. That organization then becomes responsible for that video. So you don't want them to get in trouble or get sued because you forgot to get your release form. Yeah, that'd be a big mistake, right? Okay, so what are some of the main things we need to pay attention to when making a public service announcement kind of format. Well, because you're working with an organization, it's very important to understand what is the organization's value. What is it they really think is important? What do they represent? So you need to kind of make the goal very clear of the PSA. Now, hopefully they already have their message clear. Usually they will. So you can look at their website, you can look at their brochure, and it will be very clear on what their goal is. Help our community through cleaning the streets, something like this, very, very clear action. So that's probably ready, but you need to spend some time to make sure you understand it clearly. Then what you're gonna do in the video is you're going to show those values by using the images in your video. And as I've said previously, show, don't tell. It's really important in these kind of videos to show something rather than just talk, right? Because if you just talk, that's the same as I visit the website and I can just read the words, right? So the video is your chance to show. So if you're talking about keeping the clean, clean, uh, streets clean, why say it when you just show it? Show someone picking up the trash in the streets to help us have a better community. Just go ahead and show it. Usually that organization will have a tag line. That is like a line that makes them famous or something that they've said that makes it very clear what they want to do. It's a very marketing kind of thing. Let me clear that off again, just here, tag line. So include the tag line in your video. You may speak it, you may say it, you may have it written in words on the video, but you want to include that 
to help really make it clear. That's kind of the punchline, I think. And know the target audience of the organization. So remember, we're always talking about this target audience who's going to watch your video. Well, in this case, the target audience for the organization is going to be their target audience, not yours. So you need to think, who is their target audience? Who would they like to make this video for? And then you need to make the video for that target audience. All right, let's go to the hardware table. Okay, here we're at the hardware table again, and what do we have today? Well, in today's hardware, what we're looking at is kind of related to post-production. So we talked about after you get back, maybe you want to add some sound. What if you want to add some video? Like just now I was showing you my slides. How can we add something like that from our computer? How can we take images from our screen and capture them and put them into our video? Well, one way is you can probably use some software on the internet. You can find some software that will help you capture or screen capture. That works, but it doesn't always work great. And if you want to capture some screen and also capture some sound, eh, that doesn't always work so great either. Let me show you something that does work very well though, and that's a capture card or a capture box or something like this. Now, you probably know someone who has one of these because usually who uses these? Gamers use these. So they play games and they like to record their games and put that recording on the internet or share with their friends. And this is just one of them from Avermedia. Media. There are many others that you can get. Now, you can buy expensive ones, but you can also get pretty cheap ones. Let me show you why this is so great. So on the back, we have our inputs and outputs. It's a little bit hard to see because it's all black. But you can see it has HDMI. So what you do is you take your HDMI cable from your computer going to your monitor. You take it out of your monitor and then it's in here. So you have an in, in. And then you take another HDMI wire and that's out. And that goes to your monitor. So this is in between your computer and your monitor. So from your computer to here, and then from here to your monitor. So you see what's really good about this is it doesn't take up any power from your computer. It doesn't slow down your computer in any way. You can just use this in between your computer and your monitor. So it's really great and convenient in that it doesn't slow down your PC at all. Then what do we have? The last little bit of this is the wire here. Oh, too many wires. It's the only downside. You got lots of wires everywhere. This plugs in here and what's at the end of that is a USB wire. This is a USB 3. So if it's a USB 3, you have to make sure your computer can use USB 3 because it needs a high speed. You can tell from the blue color there. So this little thing right here would not slow down my computer at all and I can do that. But look at what else it has, something interesting. On the front you can see the company's name of course, but can you see those two little, let me unplug these more angle here, those little jack holes there, ah there we go, yep yeah, there it is. Those are mini jacks or one eighth jack. Remember we talked about that before? And we can plug into that, right? What can we plug into that? A microphone. We can put a microphone in there. So we could actually put in a microphone and we could be recording our screen and recording our voice at the same time. Cut. Go back in a second there, Clyde. So we could be recording our voice and the video from the screen at the same time, which is really convenient. 
So if you want to do something, especially for training, and you want to show somebody how to do something on the computer, or maybe you're training freshmen coming to your school, but you want to use a map of the school. So you can just use Google Maps or have a map, a picture, and you can be using your computer screen and speaking at the same time and capturing that. A really great way to do some post-production. So good luck on your post-production and capturing some screenshots.